Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. The realm of cybersecurity is a perpetually evolving landscape, always in flux. Were you aware that a staggering 80% of breaches exploit compromised identities, sometimes requiring as long as 250 days to detect? While I dislike adopting a cynical viewpoint, experience has taught me a valuable lesson. Individuals can be categorized into two groups, those who have already been hacked and those who are inevitably will be hacked. So if you don't want to become a statistic, don't skip forward because I'm going to teach you how not to become a statistic. Before we delve into the array of tools that hackers employ to outsmart and deceive, enabling them to gain access and transition from their domain to yours, let's first examine how you could potentially lose everything from your identity to your hard-earned finances. Without further ado, let's plunge into the heart of the matter. Allow me to present our hacker. After identifying a target, they've invested considerable time, spanning weeks if not months, in identifying the most suitable victims. Now, let's delve into their next course of action. This forthcoming assault goes by several monikers, yet I personally refer to it as the interception attack. For this illustration, let's focus on our designated victim, who we'll refer to as BC Steel. The rationale behind our hacker's decision to target BC Steel is multifaceted. Firstly, they scrutinize the company's security measures. Secondly, the company's size should be substantial enough for effective departmentalization. Naturally, the hacker intends to avoid scenarios where employees gather during lunch hours to discuss transactions. Moreover, the hacker seeks out a company involved in frequent and substantial transactions after all. The endeavor needs to be worthwhile considering the trouble involved. Step 1 involves the compromise itself and selecting the ideal target. By swiftly assessing the company, the hacker gains insights into all the key players, even spotting their email addresses on the company's website. This process is called reconnaissance. This scenario becomes a perfect storm for launching a spear phishing attack. Step 2 entails the long game. Once the hacker successfully infiltrates the director's email, often endowed with administrative privileges, they might proceed to establish a fresh admin account as a precautionary measure against potential password changes by the director. To add an extra layer of control, the hacker could even set up a mail forwarder on the CFO's email address. Step 3 involves the virtue of patience. The hacker adopts a more passive approach, meticulously reviewing emails to absorb valuable information. B.C. Steel, being a reputable company with a substantial customer base, provides ample learning opportunities. Here, the hacker grasps the director's unique communication style comprising nuances like tone, humor, punctuation preferences, or even their absence. Only after immersing himself in this acquired knowledge does the hacker pinpoint his next target. Observing that ZXC Construction has substantial upcoming projects and has recently approved BC Steel's proposal, the time has come for the hacker to enact their plan and spring the trap. Crucial to understand is that the hacker now possesses the proposal, comprehends its pricing intricacies, and has a grasp of the company's policies, essentially possessing all the essential elements required to deftly exploit the situation and make their move. Step number four, or what I fondly term the deception, involves the initial stage. Here, the hacker's foremost priority is to ensure that all communication exchanged between BC Steel and their client, ZXC Construction, remains accessible solely to him throughout the entire duration of the interception attack. Perfecting the deception calls for a touch of finesse. The hacker strategically devises a set of rules without delving into overly technical details. A fascinating tidbit, a staggering 90% of individuals are either unaware of or neglect their RSS folder in their inbox. This discovery becomes the hacker's advantage allowing them to discreetly conceal all correspondence shared between the two companies. To execute this feat, the hacker would likely target the CFO or the designated account personnel's mailbox. In essence, a few tweaks to the existing rules are all it takes to accomplish this maneuver. The final move, following a brief exchange of messages, the hacker would cleverly initiate their move by sending a request for payment, a deposit, or potentially even a partial payment. Craftily, the email might include a statement such as, Kindly note that our banking details have been updated. Please refer to the revised banking details on the pro forma. With flawless execution, the funds disappear into the abyss. 
but who truly bears the brunt of this malicious orchestration. It's a matter of perspective. Some might argue that B.C. Steele's negligence played a role, and they wouldn't be entirely wrong. If the company failed to adhere to fundamental security practices, such as implementing two-factor authentication, 2FA, or security information in event management, SIEM system to name a few, those critics would be justified in their assessment. I greatly value diverse perspectives, so please don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comments section. Now, let's delve deeper into the realm of denial. The following statements are frequently echoed. I'm not that stupid. It will never happen to me. I always second-guess emails. I know what I'm doing. My staff have been taught the skills they need and so on and so on. So then, let me give you an example. The hacker used the exact methodology as I used in the last example to steal $2.3 million from the USVI government. So let's go through the list of the hacker's arsenal deployed in this attack. Again, not going to get too technical here. Social engineering comprises of four primary components, investigation or reconnaissance, the hook, the play, and the exit. Reconnaissance is a sobering revelation in the realm of cybersecurity. Hackers employ the OSINT methodology, drawing from sources like Google, social media platforms, various media platforms, publicly available government data, professional and academic publications, commercial data sets, and even less formal sources of information known as gray literature. The hook can encompass numerous strategies, but we will concentrate on two key methods, phishing, spear phishing, and whale phishing. Spear phishing is tailored to a particular group, while whaling specifically targets high-ranking officials within an organization. Spear phishing aims to pilfer Logan credentials and sensitive information, while whaling's objective is to extract trade secrets capable of impacting a company's overall performance. The play can also mean a number of strategies, such as accessing resources on the company network and stealing intellectual data, which risks detection. But in our example, the play was about monitoring and intercepting mail communication, which is normally the long game. The play encompasses a range of tactics, including accessing resources on the company network to pilfer intellectual data, a maneuver laden with the risk of detection. However, in our scenario, the play involved the monitoring and interception of email communications, a strategy typically aligned with a long-term approach. As for the exit, the standard procedure for a hacker entails erasing all traces of their presence, meticulously covering their track. In our case study, this involved deleting rules and logs, effectively concluding the ruse while departing with their ill-gotten. Awesome viewers! We couldn't be more thrilled to create incredible content for all of you. But hey, we need your support to keep this show going strong. So, if you enjoy what you see here, be sure to hit that like button and hit that magical subscribe button right now. Oh, and here's the best part. Leave us a little comment down below with the magic words I have subscribed, and we'll know that you've joined our fantastic community. As assured, the forthcoming steps will aid in safeguarding you against falling into the clutches of hackers. Don't open emails and attachments from suspicious sources. If you don't know the sender in question, you don't need to answer an email. Even if you do know them and are suspicious about their message, cross-check and confirm the news from other sources, such as via telephone or directly from a service provider's site. Remember that email addresses are spoofed all of the time. Even an email purportedly coming from a trusted source may have actually been initiated by an attacker. Ensure that your company refrains from displaying direct email addresses on your website. Opt for generic addresses like info or billing instead. It's crucial that the individual responsible for forwarding these emails to their intended recipients is adequately trained to recognize potential risks. Use multi-factor authentication. One of the most valuable pieces of information attackers seek are user credentials. Using multi-factor authentication helps ensure your account's protection in the event of system compromise. Watch my video on 2FA. Link in description. Exercise caution regarding the amount of personal information shared on social media platforms and refrain from accepting friend requests from individuals you don't know. Ensure you regularly update and configure your privacy settings for added security. Be wary of tempting offers if an offer sounds too enticing. Think twice before accepting it as fact.
Googling the topic can help you quickly determine whether you're dealing with a legitimate offer or a trap. Keep your antivirus slash anti-malware software updated, make sure automatic updates are engaged, or make it a habit to download the latest signatures first thing each day. Periodically, check to make sure that the updates have been applied and scan your system for possible infections. Both you and your staff should consistently participate in ongoing awareness training. This practice will guarantee that you remain well-informed and proactive in staying ahead of potential threats. When uncertain, it's best to omit the action or reach out to your IT professional. Instead of simply forwarding the email, which could potentially propagate an infection, exercise caution and seek expert guidance. Thank you for watching and taking the time to learn about these critical cybersecurity practices. Stay vigilant, stay informed, and together, we can stay ahead of the hackers.